In this video, we're going to look at the homogeneity property of demand functions. We're going to start with the Cobb-Douglas utility function, and we're going to show that the demand functions uh, from Cobb-Douglas are homogeneous to degree 0. Here's our utility function, a function of good x and good y, the consumer's budget constraint, m is the consumer's income, and we got the respective prices here, p subscript x and p subscript y. I'll set up a Lagrangian to maximize utility subject to the constraint. We'll start with three partial derivatives. Here's a partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to good x. Bring down the a in front here, and then a minus 1 leaves this result. And since lambda is being multiplied by minus the price of good x times x, uh, the rest of the partial derivative will leave us with this. What I like to do now is solve this for lambda, so moving this lambda term over to one side and dividing through by the price of good x, we get this result. The partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to good y, uh, since y is being raised to the 1 minus a power, that comes down in front, and then we need to subtract 1 from the exponent here, so 1 minus a minus 1 just leaves us with y raised to the minus eighth power a minus a power. And once again, solving for lambda, we get this result. Final partial derivative, uh, the partial derivative with respect to lambda just gets us back the budget constraint, what's in parentheses. All these partial derivatives are set equal to zero. We're interested in maximizing utility. So what I'd like to do now is set lambda equal to lambda. We had two expressions for lambda on the first screen here. So setting lambda equal to lambda. I'm going to solve for y. So I'm going to solve this for y. Uh, so uh, what did I do here? I first multiplied both sides through by the price of good x. That's why the price of good x is over here now. Uh, the next thing I did was I divided both sides through by y raised to the minus a power. Okay, so that's why y raised to the minus a is now over here, divided both sides through by it. And then finally, this term here, a multiplied by x raised to the a minus 1 power, I divided everything through by that term. So that's why this now appears over here on the right-hand side. Uh, the next step, uh, just following the rules of exponents, the left-hand side will simplify very nicely down to just y. Uh, the right-hand side, this x raised to the a power of a and this x raised to the power of a minus 1 just simplifies to x. So we have that. And then the next step is just to plug this equation into the budget constraint. As I rewrote over here, so where I see y, I'm going to plug this result into it. So here's the result after the substitution. Uh, the next step, I'm showing that the price of good y divided by the price of good y, it's just 1, cancels. So now we have this step. Rewriting that step over here, I am going to factor out an x term on the right-hand side. So I factored out x on the right-hand side. Uh, then I'm going to add these two terms together in parentheses, so getting common, de getting common denominators here. Uh, what we'll note here is we got a, a times the price of good x and minus a times price of good x. That'll cancel. So that'll just leave us this in parentheses, price of good x divided by a. Solving for x, we have the demand for good x for this consumer. And finally, the last slide here, we're going to show that the following demand function uh, coming out of this Cobb-Douglas utility function is homogeneous to degree 0. So what does that mean? Uh, it, uh, demand is homogeneous to degree 0. Uh, here I'm just writing it in general. So the demand in this case is a function of income and the price of good x. If we're, a multiply, if we're to multiply income and the price of good x by some constant, it would leave the consumer's demand unchanged. In other words, if we factor out this theta term, it would be raised to the power of 0, and any number raised to the power of 0 is just 1. Uh, again, it wouldn't have any effect on our consumer's demand. So to show that more explicitly, here we have the consumer's demand. Wherever I have income or a price term, I'm going to multiply it by some number, theta. This 
this could be two, this could be 1.5, uh, so just some, some constant. And what you'll notice here is the theta and theta cancel, so again, this is, uh, this is equivalent. Uh, another way of wording this is that a doubling of income and a doubling of the price does not affect the quantity demanded when you have demand functions that are homogeneous to degree zero. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful.